How's it going everyone? This is Josh Ellis with Shining 3D located here in our Tampa, Florida office. And today I am excited to show you our new Free Scan Track Pro 2. Today's demo, we're going to be covering everything from calibration to the data acquisition and then into the final uh, mesh product. Right? So let's go ahead and get started with the calibration. First, we're going to be calibrating the track. All the directions are going to be seen directly on your software, right? So following this to a T is going to be crucial. Right now, I am lining everything up. Once you hear that green, uh, once you see it go green and then you hear the boop, that's whenever you're good to go to the next one. And then just moving this around where it shows you, right? Because this is a dynamic tracker, so it's going to be able to see exactly where these markers are. As you go with it, fit in there, then go up, then go up. Doing a little calibration dance. Now it's telling me that I need to orientate my bar to this side. So originally we started off like this, so now let's turn it this way and we're going to follow the same steps just as we did. Another good point with that, right? So now we're going to this side. As you'll see on this, these are angled up like that. This is not going to be able to see those like that. How it needs to be is angled down right there, right? So it's not being taken away from the trajectory, or the uh, angle is not being taken away. And now this is also a, a good point to bring in. The angle in which you have it, See on the left side, the more angle you have up top like that, it's going to make the bar longer and vice versa with the right side, right? So being able to capture it just like that and then coming over a little bit, there we go. Same concept. With the track now calibrated, we can go into the calibration of the scanner. Very similar to what you've probably seen in the past with a lot of our free scan line. Uh, so it's again just following what you see on the screen, pretty, pretty detailed. All right, now that we have calibrated both the tracker and the scanner, now what we're going to go into is the system calibration. All right, so now we've seen uh, the calibration for the tracker and the scanner. And what we just did here was the system calibra calibration, which is enabling, it's calibrating the software and the hardware for a dynamic tracking and the movements that we're gonna be doing whenever we do the scan. All right, now for the fun portion. We've done the calibration, it's up to date. Now we can get into the actual scanning portion. So with this, there are three different modes we can utilize. That's going to be the 50 laser lines for that rapid, rapid data collection. The seven parallel laser lines, that's going to be for our finer detail. And then the single laser line, which is going to be for that deep hole capture. Right now, we're going to start off with the 50 laser lines, capture as much as we can of this object, and then go by, back, find the critical areas that maybe we need some more fine detail, uh, or even getting in some of the holes like that, we can use the single laser line. So let's start it off. I do want to point out, very important, that the track be able to see the scanner itself, right? This is working in correlation with one another. If it can't see these markers, then it's not going to be able to pick up and register the data going back and forth. So making sure this is in sight, similar to a lot of uh, our other workflows, it's just going to be point and shoot and paint like a paintbrush. And we are collecting data. So in 50 laser lines, it's about 3 million points per second at an accuracy of 23 microns. Another thing to point out is with the tracker, 
So right now we're pretty, we're pretty close to it, but the track can be up to five meters away uh, in order to still capture data. So to give an example, to get the top of an elevator on an airplane, you were able to still have this on the ground and then still capture the data. Getting all of those crevices as much as we can in this first pass. Like I said, capturing three million points per second at an accuracy of 23 microns. And as you notice, no markers on the object, right? So this is what's going to be used as the reference to be able to stitch everything together. It's still projecting those laser lines onto the object, bouncing back, and then using these as reference with the tracker so the data can stitch it together. As you see, I'm actually changing the brightness as I'm going. That can be done directly on the scanner itself. As you can see on the software, with the green, the red, and the blue, that's just going to be your distance indicator. Right, too close, it's going to be red, perfect distance is going to be green, too far, it's going to be those blue lines. You can have the ability to change some more th uh, traditional ones that you've seen in the past where the uh, distance indicator is going to be a bar on the left hand side over here. Now we've got all the data collected and the 50 laser lines. We can go through, clean up any areas, uh, like we capture some of the ground, we can take that out. Um, and then we can kind of show you some other features with the seven laser lines and then also the single laser line. All right, so now we've scanned the entire object with the 50 laser lines. What I want to show now is going to be the partial HD feature that we offer. We've scanned the entire thing in 0.5 millimeter resolution, but say we had some critical areas that were like, you know what, I want to make sure that it gets better resolution in those areas, whether it be like a tight corner, um, maybe the, there's some like writing on there that you would like to be able to get in there. So what we can do now is utilize the partial HD, and I'll show you what that is here, but it's going to allow me to erase out what we've already captured. I can then recapture that specific area with a lower resolution, right? And I'll show you here right now. So we'll click Partial HD, and you'll immediately know right after you do that, your point resolution goes down from 0.5 into the 0.4. You can actually bring this all the way down to the 0.03, but for this, let's just say we're going to go down to a 0.1. And what this has given us the ability to do is, one, not put too much stress on our computer, being that we don't need to scan the entire object in 0.1. And it also gives us the ability to get that finer detail in certain areas, right? Whether it be a tight corner, you know, a thin walled object, something like that. We can go back, erase that portion out, and come back and rescan it in a higher resolution. For this portion, we're actually going to go in and delete out the data that we've already gotten in this area here, and then rescanning it at that higher resolution. So once that's, once that's deleted out, we'll go back in with that seven parallel laser lines and then rescan just that portion there at the 0.1 millimeter resolution once it processes. Now that that portion has been deleted out, what we're going to do is come back with that seven, uh, seven parallel laser lines at that high resolution, just like we scan everything else. But as you'll notice here, it's only capturing data in that area that we've taken out. It's not going to be overlapping any other data. It knows that we already have our information in the other areas. It's only capturing what we need. Okay. 
paying attention to those parallel lines, so it's changing from red to green to blue, making sure we're working at the optimal distance for the seven parallel laser lines. Again, this is going to be really good for those critical areas that maybe you said, all right, I don't need 0.1 millimeters of the entire object itself, but I do have some areas that I would like a higher resolution. This gives you that ability to utilize that. So now we've seen the 50 laser lines. Then we saw the partial HD with the seven laser lines and that fine detail. Now we can show you the single laser line, which is going to be for that deep hole data capture ability. Right, so a good example is to be the top portion of this right here. There's, you know, there's only so much that the 50 laser lines are going to be able to get in there, but with the single laser line, it's going to intensify that one laser, right? So it has one laser projector that's going to be uh, intensifying that laser directly into this hole. And we will show you that now. Now we can go with that single laser line. And start to capture that data on the inside here. On the inside of that hole at the top there. Starting to capture that data for the inside of it. So you can expect about two to five times the diameter of the hole. It's going to be the depth that you're going to be able to capture. Obviously, with the bigger the hole, the, the farther down in depth you're going to be able to get. The smaller the hole, the less. Let's see what I can get. A little bit more there. But yeah, for that, that gives a good representation of the actual depth you're able to get with that. So let's try and connect the domain, as you've probably seen with some of our other, actually all of our other softwares. Alright, connect the domain. And then from there, we can invert it, and anything that's not within that 0.5 millimeters that we had set it to in resolution will be identified as objects that do not need to be a part of it. We can delete that out, and now we have a clean piece. Save that. And then from here, we can go into the meshing portion. Once we mesh, we can go into our post-processing, do any cleanups, hole filling, uh, delete out some unwanted data, uh, and then you're able to export from there. All right, we hope you enjoyed today's video of the new FreeScan Track Pro 2. Can't wait to get it in y'all's hands and hear your feedback. For more information, reach out to us directly, or you can go to shining3d.com for more shining ideas. And thanks again. Can't wait to hear from you. Bye.